Tainted drugs. Ex-FDA inspector warns of dangers in U.S. meds made in China and India. QA expert Daryl Guberman explains. FDA recalls, a reminder that China controls much of the world's drug supply. If we were ever in an international incident with China, they would literally have their hands around our necks in terms of critical drugs. And this is based, those are articles that this video is based on, but these are the videos that we've done. And here they are. And they will be down in the description. Indian government's failure to regulate pharmaceuticals has caused problems and deaths in Gambia. Due to the quality negligence, India government is responsible for deaths in Gambia, USA, QA expert Daryl Guberman says. Made in pharmaceutical repeat offender in India blamed for 66 deaths in the Gambia. India pharma industry has a deep culture of corruption, QA expert Daryl Guberman exposes, reference Gambia. QA expert Daryl Guberman exposes corporations and government, U.S., appear to be similar to Gambia and India. Counterfeit accreditation partially to blame for COVID-19 made in pharmaceutical Gambia deaths. Business owners, my fellow citizens, we do this today because this is very pervasive through um, our world. Uh, the issues that uh, abound here uh, are absolutely horrendous. Um, in 2019, okay, you're looking at this behind me. In 2019, a chairman of ANSI, the American National Stand Standards Institute, a Russ Cheney, okay, contacted me, called me up on the phone because I had exposed a situation of an accreditation body for laboratory accreditation. I am not going to go into the whole mess, but I will say this. He contacted me. And this is what he said. This is his exact recording. Now, he's a chairman, mind you. So everybody who sits upon ANSI's board uh, is, is part of this, is culpable of what he said. Half a nut, fuck you. And here it is. My feeling is, is that Russ was just telling us about the quality that's dispensed because you see recalls in medical, in pharmaceutical, in aerospace, in automotive. You see these recalls and nobody's doing anything about it. People take it on the chin. You're buying a $45,000, $50,000 car. You drive it off the lot and three months later you get a recall on it. What kind of schmuck would do that? You should take that car, drive it through not only the window of the car, of the auto place, but you should stand outside with a picket sign. That's what you should do. You know, you buy these cars and you buy all of this mess and they have a recall on it. That's what you should do. Picket them. Exactly. Another thing is this. ANSI, between the years of 2015 and 2021, were controlled and manipulated by communist China. You will see the CEO, Joe Batia, okay, the CEO, Joe Batia, standing up there kissing the tuckus of China, okay? And it's unbelievable. It, not, not, it isn't unbelievable, okay? I wrote them when this guy left me that message, Joe Batia, incompetency, $2 million of a mess, and nobody does anything. I went down there to picket them. You'll find my videos about me in front of ANSI on... Uh, <laughs> On Northwest L Street at 1899, the building down there in Washington, D.C. We were about two miles, I think, or so away from the White House. So the Secret Service showed up, the police showed up, and, all, <laughs> and also the FBI walked by a couple of times. I want to give them, you know, I should have given them a sandwich or something. It's absolutely disgusting when you have a 104 plus year c company who's got people on board that speak that language. Joe Bathy approves it. A, a Jameson Carroll of Carroll and Weiss. I wouldn't use them for a dog catch. You hear me in <laughs> Georgia, where they are? Oh, my God. And by the way, these guys, I, I'm asked all the time, are you scared that they're going to sue you? I, I said, listen, I've got a letter here from an attorney. After 40 years, he finally siphoned it down. And he gives you the perfect thing. He said, 
state and federal courtrooms are no more than smoke and mirrors. And let me tell you, I would take that whatever the thing about cease and desist, I'd take it and make it into a paper airplane and toss it because you have an $84 million corporation who's been trying as they may throughout the 12 years that I've been in business to try to take me out of action. And can't do it. Can't do it. Do you know why? What I have is what Joe Bathia doesn't have, what... Uh, <clears throat> what Jameson Carroll doesn't have, what Russ Cheney doesn't have, what these corporations like Jim Tassett and Lockheed doesn't have. Also, David Calhoun, they all sit on ANSI's board. David Calhoun of Boeing doesn't have. Uh, the FDA, the CDC, the D DHS, you know, they don't have integrity. They don't have the honesty or the truth. They don't have that. They have bribing going on, you know, and it's terrible. And our politicians are really to blame for this mess. You know, we elect them. We elect all our politicians for the people and by the people. That's a bunch of horse shit. By the way, that's a quality term talking about our politicians. Because this is a factor. These people that we elect, they are not kings nor queens, but servants of the people who elected the legislature to make laws, not bribes. When you have, such as in Connecticut, I will give you a for example here that we have Rosa DeLauro, Jim Himes, Christopher Murphy, and Richard Blumenthal taking bribes from Lockheed Martin while we elect them. There's about 3 million, uh, there's 3 million 600,000 people in Connecticut. That means approximately these four politicians watch over 900,000 people. It is, it is, Mathematically impossible for them to get anything done. There's too many of us and not enough smarts there in Hartford. They complimented Lockheed Martin in 2015 when Lockheed was being you know, buying a uh, Sikorsky aircraft. But let me give you a history on this because you've already seen, you're going to see this mess on who sits on ANSI. At that time being controlled and manipulated by communist China, but let's go back in time. 2009, Lockheed Martin gets hacked by China taking the F-35. There was an article most recently concerning the F-35, and I did a, a supplement video. In this article, it said after 800 aircraft, they still have defects that will cause loss of aircraft and loss of life of the pilot. After 800 aircraft. And Lockheed sits on ANSI. Many of their registrars are accredited by ANAP. Okay, many, the American National Credit Board that ANSI took over in 2018. And in 2012, a division of, Sikors a division of United Technologies got hacked by China, Sikorsky Aircraft. In 2013, uh, Lockheed and Bell started cavort together for the um, Valiant, um, <laughs> for the Valiant aircraft, the V-280, that they beat out Lockheed, Sikorsky, and Boeing on to replace the Black Hawk helicopter. Yet, as we've seen in the past history, that Lockheed cannot keep their shit together when it comes to cybersecurity. Because my feeling is when they start to work with uh, Bell, that they had blueprints switching hands and all this, they'll say no, they'll deny it. But I am sure they did. And since Lockheed can't keep their cybersecurity together, China stole it. Because most recently, in an exposition in China, they were showing both the, um, uh, the Valor, the V280 from Bell, and they were also showing the Defiant SB1 from Lockheed, Sikorsky, and Boeing on exp exhibition models. I guess they're flying models of those two aircraft. So we have aircraft we're going to give the military that the Chinese already have. Now, what kind of schmucks would do that? All right. Now we continue on. We go to 2015. In the Connecticut Mirror, it stated, with China's okay, Lockheed Martin closes in on the purchase of Sikorsky aircraft. You have Rosa DeLauro, Jim Himes, Christopher Murphy, and Richard Blumenthal all praise Lockheed Martin for working with communist China. While you have Christopher Ray, the director of the FBI, get up under deposition on November 15, 2022, and say, China's a detriment to America. China is a detriment to America, and so is TikTok. And here he is giving the deposition, right? But you know what he really is? This, a clown, a clown. Except he's missing the bulbous nose and those flappy red feet, you can't see it. The flappy feet, you know, the shoes? Yeah, it's disgusting. 
It really is. So you have our four representatives who are elected for the people and by the people praising the fact that Lockheed worked with communist China. Between 2015 and 21, Lockheed sat on the International Accreditation Forum in Delaware, incorporated in Delaware, where ANSI and ANAB also sat in Pakistan and, I, and Iran, who harbored some of the terrorists of 9-11 and also harbored Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. You have Lockheed Martin, our number one manufacturer, and most recently, China put sanctions on Lockheed Martin and Raytheon, who also, again, sit on ANSI's board. So for these politicians like Deloro, uh, Himes, Murphy, and Blumenthal, I will say this again to you personally. You are not kings or queens, but servants of the people, people who elected a legislature to make laws, not to take bribes like from Lockheed. And Lockheed has a disbursements list. You'll find a disbursements down below just to show you in all 50 states, Lockheed is grease in the palm of our politicians, both Democrat and Republican. Let's continue. Now with this tainted medication, okay? When you get sick from taking a medication, it might not be because you're allergic to the medication, but you're allergic to the constituents of the medication that's inside that was made in China or India. Sitting on ANSI's board is Johnson & Johnson. Now, this is only a small, small little piece of this mess. Johnson & Johnson sitting there. You also have Pfizer sitting there. And by the way, Pfizer was caught bribing some of the countries to get their medications in. On top of it, you have both Johnson & Johnson and Pfizer, okay, who skip quality processes and standards in the development, uh, actually in the uh, manufacturing process of the COVID vaccine. Pfizer, 15 million vials returned. Johnson Johnson, 60 million. The FDA demanded that. Why? They sit together on there. And by the way, when they have a recall in the medical arena, they usually catch it after the horse escapes the barn, very rarely before. And how they catch it? Some people may get sick and some people will ultimately die. And that's the way they cause a recall for lot and batch. Don't let anybody say other. You also have NIH on board, NIH. You also have the CDC on board, being controlled and manipulated between 2015 and 21. And the FDA. They sit too close, you know, they sit very close together. And always a blind eye is put in the arena of medical for you and I taking medications. It's always a blind eye. Now you have the FBI, and I showed you, Christopher Ray said we must, this is what Christopher Ray said under deposition. He said, the whole of the Chinese society is a threat to the U.S., and Americans must step up to defend themselves. Well, Chris, you have the lawmakers in Connecticut basically saying, half a nut, fuck you, to you. And that was Russ Cheney. So his, is, his title over there is pervasive throughout the quality industry that ANSI and ANAB watch over. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, ANSI and ANAB are underwriters, which means they take full legal responsibility of anything that's happening. But you know what the problem is? ANSI and ANAB are intimately involved with the American Bar Association. Who do they have sitting on board too? The Department of Justice. So here's Christopher Ray giving a speech saying we may maintain vigilance while <clears throat> basically, and I hate to do this because I type a lot, I hate to do this, but basically what those, what, what our four representatives did in Connecticut went like this to Chris, uh, it went like this to Christopher Ray, just like this. See this, Chris? I've got a trick finger here from typing too much. And here it is. The final thing I'm going to show you about our wonderful government selling us out is when Rand Paul, who I feel goes out to lunch with Anthony Fauci, but I also feel that when anybody is questioned at the Senate or Congress, they're given the questions probably three, four weeks beforehand, so they prep themselves. You ever watch any of these? They're so, they're not nervous. They must be on a lot of drugs though, just calm them down maybe, who the hell knows? But I will say this, you have the NIH on board. Anthony Fauci was asked about gain of function research by Senator Rand Paul. Anthony Fauci said, no, I didn't do it. Then articles come out saying that Fauci invested $3.8 million into it and all the rest of this other crap for Wuhan. Yes, it's true. They did release the COVID virus. So many people have said it. And you have the vice president of um, 
Vice President of Laboratory Accreditation, Pamela Sale, under deposition, say basically that there are no controls in the laboratory. Everything is ad hoc and you choose this or choose that, which can cause an escape without a doubt. And he said that he didn't know anything about gain of function. Well, I pulled this out of a Chinese um, a technical magazine concerning uh, uh, global health. Uh, and uh, I would send this to you gladly, 203-556-1493 or Daryl, D-A-R-Y-L, T-Q-R-S at yahoo.com. And <clears throat> here it is, gain of function. This was in 2017, uh, this a second workshop. The second China-U.S. workshop on the challenges of emerging infections. If you look at all the bullet points, I'll gladly send it to you. They were prepping uh, for a pandemic, without a doubt. Between May uh, 17th and 19th, 2017 in Wuhan, China, and the first, uh, first part of the business on the bullet point is gain-of-function research. So you're going to deal with liars. People bent down and took the injection. They didn't even know what they were taking when it got emergency authorization. They could have been putting horse crap into your veins. It'll be safe and effective. It wasn't safe and effective. More of my friends who got the shot ended up to get sick, really sick bad, okay? And uh, I had COVID, okay? I, you know, I had COVID and I'm proud to say that I did not take the shot because I know behind this quality crap what is going on. What is going on is terrible. Okay, and for those of you who have taken the shot, I will tell you something. A.A. A. Milne said it perfectly for you ladies and gentlemen. I know I've heard it all. I had to take it to save my job. I had to take it because of my mother. I had to take it because of my father. I had to take it for this and that. And now you discover, you see the, the stuff that is coming out, how the young between 25 and 44 are having heart attacks. Never before so many people, I think it's 120,000 in the United States, and these are people who have taken the vaccine or whatever that is that Pfizer concocted up in a lab. <laughs> I'm going to leave it here, business owners, my fellow citizens. It is absolutely a deplorable ordeal that we have gone through. Um, it is unbelievably disgusting. I'm going to leave it here because this is about China and India. And the medications that we receive are tainted, a lot of them. You have recalls, recalls, and recalls. I had one of my medications that were recalled because it was made in China and there was a contaminant that could cause cancer. And I know what they're saying. Well, it's just a little bit, just a little bit. Well, just a little bit is, just a little bit of that. That's not good. So you're trying to treat uh, one ailment while you're going to get cancer not implied by your drugs you're taking. Unbelievable. Telephone number is 203-556-1493. Or... Uh, Daryl, D-A-R-Y-L-T-Q-R-S at yahoo.com. And I do this because I care. I give a shit. When you have a 104-year-old company that doesn't even apologize, an $84 million company that doesn't apologize. That's all I want in 2019. Then in 2022, I applied for a director at large because I wanted to be a representative for the small mom and pop shop into those big OEMs, which they need it because there is lack of communications. If you really want to hear about quality issues, there's lack of communications between the small suppliers and those big OEMs where they supply materials to. And I wanted to do that. So I applied. Uh, I got a letter from Joe Bathia, you know, form letter that said, congratulations on applying for being a uh, director at large. And they gave me clicks links and the click links br brought it to the code of conduct where if you see this language, uh, Russ Cheney should have been thrown out, but they didn't. They didn't throw him out. They didn't scold him. They didn't give me what I wanted is an apology. Joe Bathy, a $2 million man, which is a waste. At the time when uh, Russ Cheney called me, he was making $350, $6,052,000 tax-free of royalty payment. Unbelievable. I can just imagine what Jameson Carroll, their lawyer, who said, I don't know what they said. They said nothing wrong. That's fine. I'm going to leave it here. I care, and that's why I do what I do. Most people sit down, and they go, bah, bah. You cannot do that. Because, you know, I will say this again about our politicians, and I'm done with this video. They are not kings or queens, but servants of the people. People who elected a legislature not to make laws, not to be in bed with Lockheed or anybody else, but to make our lives better. Instead, 
They only make it worse. I thank you.